Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to the Nashville Stars franchise. I'm having a lot of fun here as we get season number two underway. I hope you guys are enjoying this series as much as I am. And here we look to build on a actually pretty decent season one. In the offseason, one of our moves was bringing David Price back to Nashville. He went to college at Vanderbilt. He actually went to high school in Tennessee as well. And we will see his first start today with the Nashville Stars. And we face a very tough lineup here for the Blue Jays. They brought in A.J. Pollock to play left field. Pollock was traded to the White Sox in real life, and now he is with the Blue Jays. So here we go. David Price in his first start and gives up a hit right away to Bo Bichette. That brings up Santiago Espinal to the play, hitting 600 on the year. And a hit and run will only get the out at first. As Ryan Mountcastle steps on the bag, that brings up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in the three hole, hitting 333 this season. One, two pitches on. This one is outside. It's a circle change for the strike three. Two outs in the inning. That's going to bring up George Springer hitting below 100 to start this season. And that one will be a walk as that brings up Teoscar Hernandez to the plate here, hitting 375. He gets a pitch to hit. This one's driven deep, and this one is out in a hurry. David Price giving up a three-run jack here in the top of the first. That was a no-doubter. Uh, Hernandez just absolutely crushed that one as well. Got way too much of the play. The exit velo of 107 that was tattooed. A.J. Pollock back at the plate. He gets one up the right um, over the middle of the plate, and he drives this one deep, and this one's gone. Back-to-back -back home runs here for Toronto. And A.J. Pollock, he hits his own no-doubt home run. And wow, what a start to David Price's career with the Nashville Stars. It won't be a long career. If he keeps going like this, as that brings up Yariel to the plate, and that's going to be a walk. So we have to start looking at our bullpen right away in the first inning. We decide to start warming up Austin Pruitt, and that brings up Chris Taylor, a new acquisition of the Toronto Blue Jays as well, and he strikes out on the inside fastball. We get out of that first inning, but four runs of damage. On to the second, more damage. Here's Moreno at the plate. He hits one down the left field line. That is another hit by Toronto. They are seeing the ball well out of David Price's hands. He's at 40 pitches so far. Bo Bichette is back at the plate, and he strikes out swinging. He started out this game with a hit up the middle. Espinal now hitting still over 500. A little bloop hit into short right field, but that one will be run down by Miguel Rojas playing second. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. over the middle is a strike three on the circle change. And we get out of that second inning, at least not giving up any runs. But moving on to the fourth inning, we are now down seven to nothing. I wanted this game to be more focused on David Price than anything. But you can just see right here, we are just not doing well. This brings up Ryan Mountcast, who hits one well to left center field. And that one at least will drive in one run. John Dumont will score from second base. Seven to one, though. We have a lot of ground to make up in this game. But Toronto, one of those teams in the division that probably will be dominant for a lot of years to come, especially with Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I mean, those two guys are cornerstone pieces. It brings up Abdubal Herrera in the fourth, and he strikes out on the check swing. No more runs here, really, in this game, except for here in the seventh. A little life here with Shea Whitcomb going the opposite way, inside outing that pitch to deep right field, down the right field line. As that brings up Jorge Alfaro to the plate. He swings and misses at some high heat. Yimmy Garcia into pitch here for the Blue Jays, but a hard hit ball to short. Robles tries to beat this one out, but an excellent play by Bo Bichette at short. And that pretty much shuts us down here for the duration of this game. A 9-2 victory here for the Blue Jays as Mercado strikes out. At the end for the last out of the game, 9-2 on the road here for the Blue Jays. Not a good showing there for David Price in his debut with Nashville. And he was kind of a hit or miss signing. It wasn't a big signing. It wasn't a small signing. It was just a guy we are putting in to the rotation. 
Maybe he can be a mentor for the lefty we drafted in the second round, Troy Quincy. 21 years old, a guy that went straight to the pros. He has actually excellent ratings right now. And he will make his major league debut in this episode following up David Price after he got shelled. But hopefully the good can rub off on Troy Quincy and the bad will not. He faces this same lineup. Here is Bo Bichette leading off this game. It will be a swinging miss at a 12-6 curveball. And Troy Quincy has his first strikeout of his career. That brings up the next batter to the plate, Santiago Espinal. He swings and misses at that 97-mile-an-hour heater. He can't keep up two strikeouts. Vladimir Guerrero at the plate, hitting 357 on the year. High heat! He strikes out the side to start out his MLB career. And how about that? Three straight strikeouts, striking out Bo Bichette. They're two cornerstones and Bo Bichette and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Troy Quincy looks good. That fastball comes in at 97. It's kind of hard to see that pitch as well. He's got a three-pitch repertoire, which is very rare. A changeup, a curveball, and a fastball. Very interesting for a starting pitcher to only have three pitches. He gets the four strike out of the game. That brings up T. Oscar, T. Oscar Hernandez to the plate, and that one will be some high heat. Strikeout number five. Can he make it six? A.J. Pollock at the plate. He takes the fastball over the middle of the plate. Two strike count now. And a changeup gets him off balance. Strikeout number six. How about that for starting out your career? Six strikeouts in a row. That's going to bring up Lourdes Gariel to the plate. Hitting 125. He swings and misses. Number seven, that ties an MLB record for strikeouts in an MLB debut in, in consecutive at-bats. But that brings up Chris Taylor, and he lines out to right field. One more strikeout, he would have had the record, but Chris Taylor is going to be the first guy to get bat on the ball. Gabriel Moreno at the plate now with two outs in the third, and he is swinging and missing. He strikes out eight of the first nine batters he faces back to the top of the lineup. Bo Bichette, he struck out earlier, obviously, now with a 1-2 pitch. Troy Quincy, high heater, and he does get bad on this one. But it's going to be a fly out here to short center field. Michael Rock is under that one. That brings up one out. That brings up Espinal again. High heater again, and Espinal pops this one up to short left field. Abdul Herrera is under that one, two outs. Guerrero at the plate now, outside fastball, paints the outside corner, it's a strike three, nine strikeouts. On to the next frame, Springer, he's going down looking also, and look at this pitch. Springer knew that fastball is just deceiving, look at him, he cannot believe it. Nine strikeouts in this game. Can we make it 10? Hernandez at the plate, and he does walk on the changeup that time. And now here's A.J. Pollock back at the plate once again, and he will strike out looking on the changeup. That one just freezes him. Look at this. He just knew. He took it. He knew right away. And that is strikeout number 10. Two outs in the inning. That brings up the seven hitter. Yariel, and he will strike out swinging. 11 strikeouts in Troy Quincy's debut. Chris Taylor back at the plate. He hits one to first base. That's a ground out. And now on to the uh, next batter that brings up Gabriel Moreno to the plate. That's a little chopper to second base. Michael Rock corrals it and throws it on the first. It's two outs in this inning, bringing up. The first batter of the game, Bo Bichette, and that one will be a fly out to shallow left. He gets through six innings, and I'm not saying anything, but I think there's a zero on the board somewhere. Espinal at the plate now in that two spot. 2-2 two -two pitch, the 90th pitch of the game. He gets a favorable call. That one looked like it was out of the zone on the curveball. 12 strikeouts. That brings up Guerrero with one out. Pop up short center field and now two outs 12 strikeouts and let's see if he can get to number 13 george springer back at the plate 
Outside changeup brings it to a 2-2 pitch. 99th pitch of the game will be a swing and miss. Strike out and strikeout number 13. The Stars lead 3-0. Troy Quincy remains on the bump. Here is Hernandez back at the plate now. 2-2 pitch. Inside fastball number 13. Wow. This guy is just dealing so far. A.J. Pollock at the plate now. 3-2 pitch. One out. The 109th pitch is going to be driven well to le left center field. This one's got carry, and that one is gone. The no-hitter is broken up here, and that one will be the first hit of the game there. A.J. Pollock just absolutely crushes that pitch. 438. He remains on the mound here, even through 114 pitches. You got to think we're thinking about pulling him here, and the manager does come out and check on him, and he is gassed. We will go to the bullpen, but what a debut by Troy Quincy. I think I have the pitch, uh, the strikeout counter wrong there. I think he had 15 strikeouts at this point. That also ties a rookie record, 15 strikeouts in a game in the debut of Troy Quincy. It's just a crazy, remarkable, good sign because we just need some future cornerstones, and I think we found one with Troy Quincy. Robert Suzuki out of the bullpen here for the five-out save, and he gives up a hit right away to right field, so now they have men on first and second. One out as that brings up Gabriel Moreno at the plate before the lineup rolls over, and that's a strike three. Low and outside sinker. Two outs. Bo Bichette at the plate. 0 for 3 in this game. He gets a slider. It looks like it's going to be in the hole. A throw to second. Not in time. Safe all around. Bases loaded. That's going to bring up Santiago Espinal, who came into this series hitting 600. 2-2 two -two pitch. It's an outside slider, and that one will be driven to right field. One run comes in. Two runs come in, and the Toronto Blue Jays tie this game up at three apiece. Robert Suzuki blows his first save of his career right here. And now they have men on the corners with Guerrero at the plate. He hits one well to right field. This one's got a whole lot of carry, but it stays in the yard. Monty Harrison playing in right field today will be under that one. On to the bottom of the eighth inning. Shea Whitcomb comes to the plate. He's hitting very, very well to start this year. He hits one well to right center. He makes it a three-hit game off of the wall, and it will be a stand-up double here for Shea Whitcomb. Our acquisition in the offseason, he was included in that trade that sent Tyrone Taylor over to the Houston Astros. So now here we go, Dominic Smith at the plate. He goes to left field. That one will get down, and now here we go. Men on the corners here in the bottom of the eighth, no outs. Jorge Alfaro at the plate, and he swings and misses. And an outside slurve, one out. Monty Harrison, a low circle change out of the zone. Swing and miss, two outs, Victor Robles. Can he come through? Hard hit ball to the right side. It's fielded cleanly. And we had men on the corners with no outs, and we failed to get a run. Gabriel Moreno at the play here in extras in the top of the 10th inning. And this one somehow gets past Robles in center. He had a weird jump on it. He may have misread it. And it's going to be a triple with two outs. Hopefully that does not come back to bite us. But anytime you show a highlight like that, you know it always does. Bo Bichette at the plate. He does walk. As that brings up Rafael Latingua to the plate for his first at-bat of the season. He gets a chop at a third base. This one's going to be trouble. Thrown on to first. And it's going to be a single. An infield single. The runner is called safe at first, and Toronto takes the 4-3 lead, bringing up Guerrero, and he swing, or he does not swing. He watches that one as his Mero Petit gets the strikeout. And now we are down by one here in extras. Here is Dominic Smith keeping this game alive with two outs. He goes up the box. So the tying run is on first base, bringing up Jorge Alfaro. Two for four today. A chopper, and it's fielded cleanly. 
thrown on to first, and we will lose again to the Blue Jays. Four to three here in extras. And I hate losing games like that because that hit to center field, misplayed by Robles, followed up by this play right here where Shea Whitcomb could not get it in time. And we lose this one. And what a debut by Troy Quincy. If there was one thing to take away from this game, it was him. 15 strikeouts. I don't know why my counter was off there. But he had 15 strikeouts in his debut. Only one hit off of that bomb, A.J. Pollock hit. I made a mistake in that game. I said that uh, Shea Whitcomb came over in the Tyrone Taylor trade. That is wrong. He actually came over in the Ha Song Kim trade along with Evan White. And now we get through the month of April a little bit, and you can just see kind of just up and down, but we do end up being one game under 500. And as we go into this uh, last game of this three-game set versus the Yankees, and even in this game right here, this latest game, we went 16 innings, winning 4-3. to three. John Dumont had eight at-bats in this one, going one for eight. Uh, but Dominic Smith went three for five in that one with a few walks. And now we get into this last game, trying to complete the sweep and hopefully get back to 500 at 11 and 11. And this Yankees team obviously made the World Series last year, losing to the Dodgers, if you remember that from the offseason. You can just see right away we have the 2 0 lead with Chris Paddock on the mound, and he is through seven innings. Still through seven, and now into the eighth inning. One run scores for New York, so we do go to the bullpen. Bringing in Cody Stajic out of the out of the pen. He has been one of our best relief pitchers. And Suzuki comes in for the save, and he will get it. We get the win here to get to 500 at 11 and 11. Chris Paddock, another win for him. 111 whip to start this year. 313 ERA. And we are right in the middle of the thick of things here in the AL East. As you can see, we are two games back of the Blue Jays and Rays, but you just saw in gameplay the Blue Jays just somehow find ways to beat us. Shea Whitcomb and Dominic Smith are leading our team in average so far through about the first 22 games, hitting 316 and 309 respectively. Good sign from them. Oscar Mercado hitting 273. It's interesting because Dominic Smith and Oscar Mercado had terrible springs, and they start out as two of the top three hitters on our team. John Dumas hitting 258. Taylor Trammell has dropped there to 233. He was one of our hot bats in the spring. Miguel Rojas hitting below 200 to start this season. I did not expect that. And Ryan Mountcastle also below 200. And then here's Jorge Alfaro, who was our lone all-star hitting 159. What is up with our team? This is just a weird team. How, how is it that our worst bats in the spring are hitting the best now? And then the guys we have historically hit the best with or have the best ratings are hitting the worst. Our starting pitcher is, pitching isn't doing too bad, though. Eliza Hernandez's whip is a little high at 145. ERA is high as well at 495. But Troy Quincy, 2-0 in, in four games and four starts, three quality starts, 225 ERA, 114 whip. This is a guy that I think we might build this rotation around in the future because he definitely looked good in his debut. All right, so next episode, we will get through the month of May and kind of look forward to the draft and really see like what we need going into the future of this season because I think May will be a big, big tell sign of are we still in this big rebuilding phase or are we kind of contending? Are we need in need of a complete rebuild to tear everything down? I think that's gonna be a big story here in the month of May. We'll have to see. We have some good pieces. I'm very happy with them. And I'm happy that we have Troy Quincy because that's a big piece as well. So hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Talking on me so my car's a tenant. Dancing with the devil. I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in the dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, this how we slide, this how we ride, yeah, yeah, this how we ride.